everyone, and welcome to our first episode of Manspeak. So Manspeak is an offshoot to the Heart Warrior series, and how it came about is as I was interviewing men in the Heart Warrior series, which is a series for those who don't know about men's journey into their heart, the masculine journey, um, a few different tools and practices came up repeatedly. So I was really keen to dig into those a bit deeper and um, get some of the men back to actually teach and give a man's perspective on that to other men. And of course, as a woman, but the focus here is on the masculine journey. Um, today's guest is Justin Carpenter. He was our heart warrior number 17. And he's going to come and talk to us about fasting. And it's a subject I'm really super interested in at the moment, having um, just completed a four day fast myself this week. So I'm really keen to ask questions, bring in my experience and just really explore this amazing um, natural uh, cure um, health um, practice. So um, enjoy the show. Hello, Justin. Welcome hey, to Man Speak. <laughs> first episode. Thank yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate you having me on. I'm I'm honored to be the first one on this new series. So thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So today we're going to talk about fasting, which is probably a new topic for a lot of people. So what's your general overview of fasting? Like what are the health benefits that come from it? Well, sure. I guess the first thing it's good to do what is fasting and, and fasting is really um it's abstaining from from any sort of uh um any one particular thing so a lot of people will term water fasting as as a, a type of fast where you're only drinking water that's technically incorrect fasting is would be abstaining from water but for just the simplicity of of the conversation water fasting when i say that that only drink water. so fast you're abstaining anything in particular. Um, but what we, what we find out and what, why the, the benefits of doing such a thing, uh, because what we find out is our body is a miracle. It truly is just this miraculous healing machine that was gifted to us. And it, and it acts just like that when we get out of its way, when we stop bogging it down with all these different things, um, eating all these different whatevers, you know, we've been trained and conditioned to, to eat and, and be a certain way. And so then our body never has to rest it never has time to deal with what it needs to it never has time to really heal um fasting is just re back into that giving your body more intentional time to fast um and you could even you could even look at the 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 necessity for sleep right now um it's only there for the most part because we eat the way that we do so our body forces us to go into this period of fasting so that it can deal with what what it is that we do eat um, so, so that's a forced period of fasting. That's why bre breakfast is you're breaking the fat. This is a time where your body's able to slow down and, and, and really deal with whatever, whatever you've given it, you know, it's a miracle. It's able to handle a wide variety of things. That's why, you know, someone who's on a, um, staining off of diet Cokes and they're still living, you know, like they're still alive. They're still breathing. They're still moving that's miraculous. You know, that, that, that is a, a feat of, of <laughs> epic proportions that that's, that's sustainable. And it, it's not sustainable, obviously, because it doesn't can, but the fact that someone can wake up each and every day, that's it. Um, and that just shows how, how amazing our body is. So when we truly tap into its potential and truly unlock all of these ways it can take care of itself, we don't really have to do that much and we can heal everything, anything, anything. There's no limit to it. And that's the, that's the best part about it is it's free. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to take anything. You don't have, to, you don't have to do anything special or extra or go to guru or guide or, or get any special medicine or anything like that. It's just, no, you just take a break from eating <laughs> break from the normal patterns of, 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 things in so that our body can really deal with what it already has um so yeah it's kind of fasting in a nutshell and it's really exciting to to get into because it's something that the medical community doesn't want anybody talking about or anybody discovering or anybody playing with anybody experimenting with because it's the end of them you know it's truly the end of them for 
taking back our our uh, taking back our, our our sovereignty, and that that means in aspect, physical health just happens a huge part of. It it's everything every bit of sovereignty has to be reclaimed so this is just a way for us to reclaim that side of ourselves and you know even just look at your relationship with um, fasting helps to recalibrate that relationship and and we've been so conditioned to just eating 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 all the time you know if you're not eating you're thinking about your next meal you're thinking about what am i going to do what am i going to prepare who am i going to have it with what am i going to watch while i'm you know all these things all to centered around eating and then you take a moment and you fast for a day and you're like oh wow i'm still alive i'm okay like i'm, I'm doing okay and and then you do it longer and you're like wow I'm, I'm actually feeling really good you know i'm i'm feeling amazing from doing this kind of stuff and it, it it's like it gets you into that idea oh wait this there's so much more to this than just there's so much more to the, just food and just sensations and and so what might that be and then this unlocks you know much more so it's a great segue to um these these higher spirit progressions that we have available to us but it's a it's a beautiful tool to utilize definitely and i'll just say that i just finished a four-day fast i was intending well first i started off with three days and i'll just preface this by saying i have done quite a few one day and two day fast, which I think is a great way to step into it just to, you know, build that confidence and wake up, hey, I'm still alive, and I'm still not hungry. You know, it's amazing um, what we come to understand by about ourselves. But um, that yeah, just that connection, what you were saying, you know, when you get when you clean your system out, and you just have got water and breath and you feel so much closer to divinity and reality. It's, it really does add a, add a, a whole new awareness to us, but I can get more into my experience later. But um, I also wanted to bring up from what you were saying that, um, am I correct in saying that's how animals heal themselves? A hundred percent. And that's, you know, I, I, I'm sure there are exceptions, but um, from my understanding, just to, a creature if it's sick or 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 um has any sort of physical ailment fasting is the route it goes to it goes it halts all all intake sometimes they'll drink water sometimes they won't drink but definitely stops all eating of food um to give that the the optimum time of what it needs to it knows nature knows so if we if and and that's really all um science really should be it's just Observation of what is the observation of nature. Nature is, regardless doing to it, who's inputting anything, nobody's manipulating nature. Nature is just as it is. And so the more that we observe nature, the more that we can act in alignment with it because we are that same structure. We're no different. You know, we're not outside of nature. We're a part of it. We like to pretend we're outside of nature and that gets us into trouble. But when we truly realize, that we are a part of this as well. It's the same principle. It's all, it's all just this trust that God made us in this way so that it, we can take care of everything that we need to. It doesn't require. So yeah, it's much a, a part of what we do in order to heal ourselves. So we don't need to very far to find it. She said, we've just got so much conditioning and programming around three meals a day, breakfast being the most important, you know, every celebration is usually focused around food. And, um, and also, I know when we're sick, we're told to, you know, get nutrients in us when all the body wants to do is stop eating and just cleanse all the, you know, the uh, detox and, and cleanse all the um, infection out But you know, we, we're programmed to do the opposite. Well, and it's it's good to it's good to draw on the, the another huge lie that we're, talking, which is about what sickness in general. You know, what are the symptoms that I'm experiencing? It's not a cold that I caught. This is not something that you you catch from. Something. We don't catch viruses. Viruses are just the 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 uh, the end result of a detox. So when your body has, is going through cellular regeneration, cellular regrowth. Some of those cells are kicked off and they're at that point they're they're decaying so they're they need to be getting rid of in that timely manner so the virus part of the sort of rid of that that those toxins getting rid of that that um accumulation of whatever it needs to be to get out of your body so that's why you'll never catch a virus from somebody and they can't ever find a, you know a virus that's just floating around anywhere because it's just something that it's as a result of detox so you're, you're spot on in the sense that sickness 
to really we really need to truly see what that sickness is representing and it's because we've had whether it's environmental or mental or whatever detox we need to go through that's happening and sometimes that results in physical symptoms so the answer is not to shove more things down your throat to and mask it or to add whatever else it truly sit with that, that detox and and help facilitate the the expulsion of it to get get back to that piece of stasis that balance point so that's what it really provides it's the fast way that balance point because you have to, um you don't deal with anything else yeah what actually happens in the body when we start Let's say even if we were to do, if we were to just skip breakfast and maybe then we can progress to, you know, longer periods of time just to let people know how effective it is from, from the first, um, from the first meal. Yeah. I, well, you mentioned skipping, skipping meals and, and that's, that's kind of bringing in the concept of intermittent fasting, which is a wonderful, incredible practice that I'd recommend really anybody do just try it, you know, see how it feels. Um, but you're talking about isolating your eating window. So if you can, if you can extend your fast, like I talked about the sleeping period that our body forces us to go into, um, it, that's a fast period. So if you can extend that period longer and say, skip your breakfast and, and it's not even, you're always going to have your break fast. You're, you're just moving your break fast to a different point. So if you can point to a further down the road, well, then you're extending that eight hour, say eight hour sleeping window, which is a fast. And if you can extend that another, say eight hours, um, and then which looks kind of like a, uh, an, an eight hour eating window. So we're only going to eat from noon to 8 PM. If you can really isolate that your eating window down to that period, that the rest of the day where your body is fasting, where you're not, where you're not intaking anything. And this is a wonderful way of that normal cadence of reset. So body always has this allotted time that it can get, it gets used to our body does get used to sick cycles that we, that we, get, uh, these patterns that we can walk into. And so if we can have the body get used to this cycle, then it can really maximize that time period of fasting to really heal and do what it needs to. And if you, if you, it's really not that, you know, it's really not a very difficult thing to maintain and you start to feel it right away. I know that I did years ago. Um, I implemented and fasting, you know, the best are, are tangible right away you start to feel so much better you don't even really have i mean it's helpful to change what you eat but you don't even really have to change what you eat to feel that immediate benefits of just having more time for your body to deal with what it needs to so it's an amazing amazing practice to put in yeah i mean an eight hour window could even be from like 10 in the morning to six at night right and you know i mean that's plenty of time to eat just sort of being aware to just extend it you know at, at both ends um and just being aware of of how we might if without that window we might just graze throughout the whole day you know we might have something when we get up and then we might have something before we fall asleep late at night but just being aware to condense that eight hour window and then would you recommend then maybe a six hour window or a four hour window how does it work for sure yeah i mean i think a progressional and and that's why you know just for listening if this is your first introduction to fasting and, and, and this concept, you know, it's, it is important to, to, to take it slow, take it at, at your body's pace. This is not something where I'm comparing myself to people who have fasted for long periods of time. And I want to immediately jump into that coming from a standard, everything diet. You know, I would never recommend doing something like that, but these are practices where you can start introducing this topic. Body warmed up the idea. So, so yeah, I think it'd be wonderful to, have have a, a week where you say okay the eight hours is my eating window and the next week you move six or four or two you know down to just one meal a day you know you've got one one meal a day that you can sustain on um that's a great practice to do as well because you're you're acclimating to that fasting and then and then if you want to take that leap and say okay this today tomorrow i'm, I'm have anything you know i'm just with water i know i'm just going to stay a full fasting to where and i really like the the 36 hour because you stop eating, right? you go through a full day of not eating and the, until the sleep, and then you eat the next, next morning. That's that's a great time period because you've got you know you're like okay this whole day I'm not going to eat anything, um, and once you once you ha you start doing realize how mental it really is. It really is just a, a mental 
game you you have to just be okay with it and and you realize just how much of a pull food has on us all the time we're always drawn to these different things and that you know often done for a variety of reasons um but including the number of parasites that we have within us you know this is not something us that's driving us to these cravings and these um drawn to these different foods all the time we have parasites in us that want to be at all the time and we're feeling these hunger pains right away it's like and anyone who's coming from a standard everything diet or even even just eating any cooked foods and things of that nature you're most likely going to have parasites in you if you don't do regular cleanses of that kind of thing so there these things that are responsible for these cravings so you can really start to see okay how do i feel when i go through this period of time fasting of not eating um but taking it slow taking it very incremental one step at a time so that you can start adding you know okay i, I went a full day and i didn't eat anything and i'm, I'm alive so a miracle i'm alive. i didn't die <laughs> and then you can pull it to two days four days five days it wasn't uh, you know as long as you're listening to your body and you're you're taking it slow it's really not a dangerous practice to put into you know be responsible with it but as long as you're incremental it's really quite a um, you can ease yourself at just how far you can go and how, how can, how you can continue it. And so the more pure we get, the more hydrated we get, the more easy to sustain fast, the more easy it is to kind of push through. And that's when you really getting to these deep, deep levels of cleansing where your body's going into ketosis and then it goes into extreme, um, sort of fat burning. And also, um, uh, I can't remember the exact term for but but it's where it targets particular areas of our body that need to be up and dealt with so people will report even like moles falling off or skin tags falling off in that time period because your body is able to focus on that thing that's unnecessary or had time to focus on before all its energy was always on digestion and that's the thing is when we're always eating we don't how much of our energy is just constantly focused on this digestion our body has no time or energy to do anything else. So when it's always in this state, we're only running in one, one, one set, one way, and never in this healing way, never in this regenerative way. So when you take that period of no eating, your body, once it's done digesting, and for different people, you, you enter the state at different rates because we have a lot of accumulated stuff. <laughs> and so it takes long to that space that you do, it really target specifically to you because your body is very intelligent so it, it specifically targets for you what are the areas that, that need to be focused so people will report injuries that they haven't felt for years sometimes they'll have a resurgent of that that pain but then it away completely might have had a dull pain for a while they go through a fast that pain grows in intensity for maybe for a day or two but then the pain goes away forever you know you're you're about a, a deal with it and, and adjust it and heal from it so it is it's a miracle it truly is you know it's a it's a it's a tool that we can use to to address just about anything that's facing us in the health definitely and i want to stress that we're all so unique and if someone's looking at starting fasting i mean we're all at different stages of what we're actually consuming you know i mean some people are still drinking alcohol eating meat having quite a, a toxic diet things like pharmaceuticals are stored in our bodies and you know not released until we do something like fasting i mean for me personally it's fasting is easy at the moment because you know i don't drink smoke you know eat meat all those things i've never done pharmaceuticals so it's a relatively pleasant process but what could someone expect who was you know first fast maybe they've been a heavy drinker they've a meat eater been on pharmaceuticals you know a really toxic diet what are they going in for well and that's that's the sort of um uh you know you could really expect just about anything you know the more the more toxic our eating style is the more toxic our lifestyle has been um we start to move away from that toxic lifestyle it's just like being with an abusive partner you know if you're with an abusive partner as you start to pull away that abusive partner then the immediate acts can be more chaotic 
Sometimes it can be more painful. Sometimes they might lash out. It's the same thing when we're dealing with this toxic way of being. As soon as we start to pull away, it recognizes in this, 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 and that has built inside of us this way that's gotten us into this toxic way. It starts to lash out. And this happens um, through the parasites, the parasites dying off, you know, candida die off. It's, you just look up, um, a lot of people will use the term herxing or um, can, candida die off or any, anything of that nature. And when these, this candida is, uh, it's a fungal um, parasite that, 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 that latches into us and it kind of helps us digest a lot of things. So it, we're grateful for it when we eat certain things, because we, if we have it, we wouldn't be able to digest it, but we don't need it to eat the foods that we're intended to eat. The only reason we need it is because we're eating things that we're not intended to eat. As we stop eating these things that we're not intended to eat, this stuff starts to die off and it doesn't go very kindly. It doesn't like when it's dying. And so it goes for any reaction that it can possibly get out of us. And so people will report um, really intense mouth ulcers or really intense pain coming up in different nausea, you know, it, the, the, the symptoms from detox are quite uh, extensive. It, I, there, there really hasn't been something that come up there. It's, a, it's a, well, that's another thing that, that people can experience and it, cause it depends on you. It depends on you and where you've gotten and where the sort of toxins or where those, where the parasites are left do the most. And so as we start to disconnect and move away from that, it can be very uncomfortable. And this can be disconcerting for people who are coming into this space and they'll say, well, I felt so horrible when I started. I felt so awful. I felt like I was dying. I felt like it was killing. And you know, it, that's what the parasites want you to think. They want you to feel like you're dying so that you go back to eating the foods to eat so that you to bring in, they're trying to make you into, into being afraid into being afraid of moving forward in the path that you are. They're trying to get you to go back to your toxic ways. And so it does depend from person and where you, how much work you've done. Cause the, the, the first few times of experimenting, that's why it's good to slow. So start with the fasting, just start with these periods of going with it so that you can warm up. Yeah. But it can be pretty intense. You know, remember the, the first time um, I, I, I experienced a pretty, candida die out is actually in a, in a, in a juice cleanse, which experienced the same similar kind of, uh, feeling during that. Um, but I, I had, I did have really intense ulcers. I felt nauseous for days, really intense headaches. Um, uh, yeah, like I had like this, um, uh, mucus out of my fingers and my eye, my eyes as well, you know, underneath my eyes, I had this, like this, like, um, uh, yeah, this like fluid coming out, you know, and this is because your, your skin is, is a, is a, is a, um, it's like your kidneys, it's a release organ, you know? So it, if your toxins can't come out of one way, your skin is kind of another way that these, come out. so these are just things that can happen when we start to go through these periods, when we start to really dig in and dig deep, it's important to, um, be honest with yourself about where you are and go about it in a way that's indicative to you that's conducive to you that you're prepared for and that's why it's important also to really be about where you are this isn't something that you should be taken lightly or it's just like oh i'm just gonna fast i've never done it before i'm just gonna do it and i'm not gonna worry about my other responsibilities or what i have well you're in for a world of hurt if you try that because anyone who knows fasting it, it does it, it brings you down a level you need to be prepared for this um, kind of period of stillness and silence so that you can really integrate all these things that are happening. Just go about your normal life and expect to feel the same and do the same. Um, so it does, it, it's, a, it's, it's something, it's almost like a natural, and I, and I love the, the comparison to it. It's, it's almost like a, a natural initiation to these higher orders, you know, because it does require diligence. It requires much um, dedication and might requires much, uh, strength to take on and say, I'm prepared to go this next step. I'm prepared to lead the way in the health space and move back to it's our birthright as well. We knew, but we've just forgotten. So we're moving back into it, but because the collective isn't there, then us moving back into it, it it's a difficult one. And it's something we 
to really say, am I ready for this? Am I ready for all that this ensues? It's not to be taken lightly. But when you go at it from that sort of standpoint, well, it's this, this trial, you know, this, this test of my will, this test of my dedication of my diligence, then you can own it in that sort of sense and say, I am for that. I'm not just take it lightly and I'm not going to, it's not going to, you know, be uncomfortable at times, but, but integrating that, that aspect really helps to um, see it for what it is, is this initiation. It's a, it's a way to say, Hey, I'm ready for the next step. And we do that in spiritually, we do that mentally. Um, but this would be the physical portion of, of that, that, that readiness and say, Hey, I'm ready to let go of all that world, um, or at least start, start that process. So yeah, it's, it's neat to look at it from that perspective because it is, it's tough and it's not, you know, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be tough. Definitely. So what I'm understanding at basic levels, not at esoteric levels, the two main functions of fasting are detoxing and then healing. Now, does the body have to detox before it can start healing? Yes, absolutely. Um, we need to, we need to detox to some extent before we can rebuild. Um, so that yeah, healing, rebuilding kind of synonymous in that sense. And it, it's a good way to kind of classify these two periods within this, this process that we're going through. You've got your detox, which is where you're breaking down all the toxic layers that we've been conditioned to take on and then rebuilding or the healing, the integrate, building up from that space. So you utilizing the, the right fuel that are, actually wants and the right minerals and, and all these different things for the whole it's not these processed fake foods cooked where it doesn't have any sort of use to us anymore but as best as possible the raw whole foods so that we're not uh, doing anymore but it is to kind of delineate and have those two as um ideas within your life because detox should be and as such i'm trying to slow down as much as possible in my life so that I can focus as much on letting go of all this stuff that that is holding on to or that I've been holding on to this is this would be you know symbolically um we're we've just entered fall you know so this symbolically this would be the fall of man and this would be uh going through this period of where we need to detox we're letting go stuff is falling away you know we're, we're having all that time where that, that old old way the old and that's all shedding away so this is falling in order to groom the spring to new life, that rebirth and that regeneration. So that would be the regrowth and, and the strength and the um, rebuild phase. But having these two kind of ideas really lets you focus on, uh, I'm going to have, I want to have a week of um, a really intense detox where I'm going to, I'm going to put aside all my meetings. I'm going to put aside all my calls and all my responsibilities, and I'm really going to dig in deep and I'm going to do uh, fruit only. I'm going to do all water fasting. I'm going to do whatever the case may be, at whatever level, this is what I want to focus on. And I'm going to really focus on digging deep within this. Um, but also know that that, that period is not sustainable, you know, really hitting heavy on detox is not as sustainable when you're trying to balance the rest of your life. So if you can have those periods where this is where I really want to detox. And then every other moment is focusing on that rebuilding. So you're, when you're, done with the detox period and this is arbitrary it's it's up to every individual to kind of choose where you go within your space and how you want to structure your life in this regard but then the phase is is focusing on okay i don't want to be at toxins at this point i just did a whole lot of work to get rid of all these toxins i need to not be adding toxins at this point, but i do all eat things there or, or eat things where i feel like i'm sustained where i feel like i'm satiated where i feel like i'm i'm do everything in my life do um, rebuild in that way so this is where exercise and, and things are, would be important as well and you can really pair these if, if you know if I can make a suggestion to anybody is is you can pair it with the moon you can pair it with the moon cycles and really time it with these this beautiful energy that we have shifting going back and forth between intense energy and low energy intense energy and low energy and if you can time these periods with this you can really do a lot with it so around a new moon is is always a great time for fasting for detoxing for 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 cleansing for preparing for the intense energies for the moon is full so those would be the more the time you want to be rebuilding and 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 um creating and doing things you know more energetically with the with alignment with the full moon 
And then the new moon could be more fasting, detoxing. So you can go, you can really, if you want to structure your life like that, that's a great way to just bring in that, that cosmic energy along with it. Um, and then other people will utilize the seasonal changes to kind of have four main, uh, of fasting cleansing, because every change is a big change energetically. So if we can have that really dedicated time to let go of what season was to let the new season come in, um, that's always a great practice. So some people will do, you know, a few days, every, every seasonal change or, or something like that, you know, just have good there, but it's, it's great. And these, these, um, acknowledging that we are, we are, um, we are cyclical. We, we are, we are not meant to just progress in the same way over and over again. It's, it's, it's cyclical way of nature, the fourfold nature of man, we go through the fall, which is where we shed weight. And then we go through the spring, which is where we bring it on. So we spring to new life and we fall, you know, it falls away. Um, so if we can honor this process, knowing that it's this constant death and rebirth, you know, it's this constant process. It's not something to, to fear, but it's something to really integrate with and work with then we can always have this, this space to where, okay, what am I doing in my life right now? Am I, am I really digging into, you really have to classify it in every moment, but it is helpful to kind of conceptualize it, at least at first, what am I doing right now? Am I shedding old skin or am I integrating and building up, you know, and, and just really classifying where I am in my life with that, um, with everything, you know, not just with food, but it's important to look at with everything, but food is a helpful uh, space to kind of see it. Definitely. I mean, my experience is and different to what when you first start going in, you fasting, you think hunger will be the main issue that you're dealing with. But for me, not at all. Even now in four days, I didn't have any hunger. It was all the other things that came up and, you know, just also the willpower not to just, you know, open the fridge and I can, I've done three days, I can break it, you know, it's just, but um, for me, because my main vice was always sugar. So whenever I even did a one day detox um, fast, I'd get quite intense headaches, but they eased, you know, the more I did, if I did a one day fast every two months, you know, th then they stopped, even though I was still eating a bit of sugar, but, you know, I could always judge, I guess, the state of my body through um, just doing a one day fast and seeing what I was experiencing and being aware of, of the sensations and, and things, but it's definitely a, an interesting process. And would you say for men, um, it brings them really into the awareness of their body that they might not have been in touch with before. And is yeah. that scary for a man? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, the difference between um, fear and excitement is just perception, right? So it, it's very, it's, it's, it's very energetic. It's very interesting to really get into this space and to start to feel all these different things because everything organized society is all about noise and distraction about just constantly keeping us never in that of stillness. So we never are just sitting. We're never just comfortable with ourselves. We're never have these moments away from everything. It's always go, 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 do, do, do. And you never have that time. So fasting is just in that same vein of a period of stillness in the physical space, you know, it's a period of to where you're not always going and doing and, and, and eating and consuming and digesting. It's a tight, it's a, it's a of stillness. And so just like anyone who goes into and tries to meditate and just tries to shut off their mind and their mind is still racing, it can seem overwhelming. It can seem like this is too much. I don't know what I'm doing here. My mind is, talking and that can that can be a lot you can go through that same sort of feeling going through thing and getting through these moments of like oh wow i don't even know the last time i've been without having something this whole new feeling for me i've never felt my stomach this way i've never felt my my body feel this night uh, but if you can really embrace it and that's where it's important to going back to this kind of viewing it as a um an initiation of sorts because there has to be that underlying faith that that this is the way, you know, this is the way to go forward. Because constantly, when we go into this path, there are going to be trials and challenges. That's part of it. 
But if you go into it knowing that this, these trials and challenges are there for me, they're there for me to help me see parts of myself that I was unwilling to or unable to see in that time, then I can integrate all those challenges into these new layers of me that I'm building with that strength, you know, strength. And so the more that we can lean in that sort of hunger and that yearning for that challenge and that being okay with it, you know, not being excited about when we feel uncomfortable, then it's not nearly as bad. It really depends on where that within that process. And I, you know, I think the, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful first start to looking at a holistic health is the, is in the physical space. Um, but even, even so it has to be viewed holistically. If you're not, if you're not good with yourself, if you're not good with, uh, just being still or, or, or you, you're not good with God, it does. It's a lot harder. It's much more difficult and you won't achieve the same results. It has to be this holistic, you know, understanding that this is the path, this is the way, and this is why these things were there. This is why there's so much, there's so many references to fasting within the Bible and these other ancient texts, because they knew, they knew how powerful it was. And they knew how powerful it was to recognize that the world, the physical was there as a teaching tool, but to step away, that's where the inner really takes place. That's where God they reach us. And so having these periods of meditation of, of complete stillness, that's where the true learning takes place. And then we go out into the world and we create, you know, that, so it's the same as, as what I was referring to earlier of having detoxing versus your rebuilding, you know, our detoxing would be the same as like a meditation period where you're really still, and you're allowing all of that divine influence to happen and come into you. And then action portion would be the rebuilding. So you're channeling that energy, that, that newfound um, integration and you're to this space where I'm adding period of flow, pairing my will and my action so I can manifest that into physical reality. So this is the creation process. And so if I can acknowledge the fasting part of that as well, as part of the same, you know, it's the same thing over again, acknowledge that that is just part of the process, then in challenges a lot easier to extend to own and to have fun with as well, because it's like, you know, it's, it, it, it does, there, there's no, there's no reward without the challenge. So when we can celebrate the challenge for what it is, and it's to give us that great reward and back to it for the reward, but just ignore that makes it a much more fun of a process. And that's ultimately how we got to this space anyway, is this is just the hardest of this experience that we've ever experienced before. And the only reason it is the hardest version of this experience that we've ever experienced before is because we asked for it to be this way because we like a challenge <laughs> and we like it to get harder. When you beat a game, when you do a puzzle, you do a hundred piece puzzle, you're not going to go continue to do the hundred piece puzzle. You're going to move to the 200 piece, 200 piece puzzle. You're going to move to a thousand, piece. you know, you're going to keep making that part. You're going to do it without the box, keep adding these challenges to yourself. And this is what we've done to get here. We've just. It's just an accumulation of challenges to get us to this. We do this because it's fun to win these games. It's fun to play these games where challenge is so great because the reward is so much greater. And so that's what we're doing here now is we're, we're owning challenge, acknowledging that it's pretty intense. You know, we, we, you could argue maybe we more than we could chew because this, this challenge is quite intense, but we didn't because we, we only have exactly what we need and God only gives us exactly what we can handle. So here we are experiencing the challenge of all challenges so that we can experience the, uh, the <laughs> through, um, exaltation of winning and, and moving through said challenge. So that, that same sort of template can be used in this healing journey. It's easier to it's easy. It's much easier for me to talk about than than to do in the moment. But in those moments where you're really digging in and you're feeling, oh man, I'm on two of a fast. I really want to go to day three. Um, I'm feeling so like you mentioned oh, that fridge. I'm seeing that thing. It looks so good. Like I just want to eat. I just want to eat some watermelon or I just want to have what whatever the sort of thing that's getting you at that time. And just to say no, I I'm sovereign here. I'm the one in charge. So I don't need that. I'm okay. Like I'm going to be okay. I, I trust that this is okay. And, and, and just, and just own the difficulties that come from that. Having those moments 
where you go through those little overcomings. It's huge. It's monumental. So each time you, we go through one, each time we, you know, I, I celebrate so much when I reach for a bag, you know, like say I, I reach for, um, I don't know, whatever that, that doesn't serve me, whatever sort of salty snack that I'm pulling at me in that particular moment. If I can really have that, that to say no in that moment to really celebrate that it's like wow that was a huge challenge for me and i didn't do it <laughs> you know and these are the same sort of wins we can give ourselves all the time just embracing what this journey is and it's about overcoming challenges it's about we might have introduced the challenges you know which you could <laughs> it, it's kind of funny how this all works you know i, I love um the concept uh alan watts portrayed it as god God's constantly playing this game of hide and seek with himself. You know, we, 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 we pretended like we've lost ourselves and we're coming back, but it's just for that joy of awakening. It's for that joy of coming back to who we are like, once again. So we're doing that once again, and it is a joy to do it. It doesn't get, you know, it doesn't get any better. So this is just another part, another multifaceted part of this holistic journey that we're all going on. Exactly, you know, to have that spiritual connection and awareness. But if we take it back to the physical, I love the fact about fasting is there's so many options. I mean, apart from time frame, you've got, you know, a fruit fast, a juice fast, you know, you've got different um, um, loads of different options there. You've got your water fast um, and then you've got your different lengths. You've got your intermittent fast. But it's also, while you're giving yourself the challenge, I just want to put in here that it's also important to be responsible because many of us have got families and jobs or we're driving or whatever. And I'll just say, because this fast that I just did, okay, I set out to do three days and then I thought I'll do four, I may as well do five. But when I woke up on day four, I felt very lightheaded. And I knew I had a big day ahead of me because I hadn't planned the fast. I mean, actually, as it happened, we had this show programmed for last, scheduled for last Sunday. And um, whatever reason, I think it was me, I had a too busy schedule. And I said, we rescheduled for today. And I'm like, well, I'll put a fast in the middle of it. And that way I can bring in my experience. So that was actually really good because that was the longest fast I'd ever done. So nice. four days. But anyway, I woke up and I knew I had to drive. And um, I work with children, so I have to be responsible. So I had to make a call that um, I was going to end my fast on day four. And I did. So I'm just saying, you know, to add responsibility with the challenge. It's great if you can give yourself a week off, but we know most people do have commitments of one sort or an another. So, you know, it's really all about self-awareness. Have you got anything to add there, Justin? Yeah, I think that's beautifully said because it it is. You know, and, and this this into this sovereignty around like don't look to me, don't look to Gemma, don't look to anybody for the um one size fits all approach to how you need to do and what you need to take into your life. It it is truly a, your process, it's your journey. Just doing we're all going the same journey, but we're all di on different paces and different parts of it. Um, so what might work for me, might what might not might not work for Gemma, might not work for you. Um, but we've gone through s different layers of this, is this experience so that we can share. So it's important to really own and be on honest with yourself about and their judgment. There's no, there's no, I need to be, I need to compare myself to this or that. And that's, that's a key space that the can get us trapped into is if we're always comparing ourselves. Oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing good enough. Look at these people. They're doing this and that that's, that's not what we're here about at all. That's not what we're trying to promote at all. It's about really just saying, Hey, I, I, I want to own where I am right now. And I want to, I want to be healthier than where right now. I want to feel better than where I am right now. And I want to take these little steps, just little steps, little steps in that direction. You mentioned the responsibility, acknowledging what, what I have to do. That's very important. We're, we're in communion with everything around us, whatever our sphere of influence is around us. That's our responsibility to, to care for and to do and make sure it's um, done appropriately. Now, sometimes we might want to get away from whatever our responsibilities are. And that's, that's something to note as well. And, you know, God, God's always pulling us to these higher reasons and maybe he is pulling you away. Maybe he's pulling, you, but you got to really get clear on why it is. I don't want to do particular things, but regardless, it's good to be 
um, acknowledge what they are and not shirk responsibilities and, and say whatever. I, I just want to focus on me in this. And that's not, that's not the point within this. It's about finding that personal responsibility in every aspect. So with, um, yeah. And so you mentioned the, the, the ways you can sort of fast or go into purer forms of cleansing. You mentioned eating fruit only. This is a great tool that people can utilize if you want to still, if you still have a busy life, you know, you still have a busy day ahead of you, but you really want to go through some cleansing. We'll go through a fruit, a fruit only day or two or three or five or a week or however long. This is a wonderful way because fruit is so quick to digest. Um, you're, the parasites don't really have a lot of time to sink into it. You know, we've been told that that feeds off sugar, which is true but it, it cannot feed off fruit sugar very well because fruit sugar passes through us so quickly. Our body adjusts it so quickly because the main thing that our body wants, which is the glucose. So by, by it only the fruit, excuse me, the, um, the parasites aren't able to feed. So you're still going through a pretty heavy level of detox, a pretty level, heavy level of cleansing, but you're able to eat able to sort of sustain that energy levels much more responsible way to go about and take care of what you need to in life and still have a pretty good level of detox ahead of you so it's just important to kind of look at where you and, and just be honest you know just be honest about where you are and where you want to go and don't be looking to other people to say i, I want to be there just where, like where do you want to go and 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 own that space and that that's true for the health space but really anywhere don't don't look to other people like just be responsible with yours so yeah boss up thank you for adding that yeah it's like you know when we start doing or becoming aware of shadow work we've all got different wounds different backgrounds different stories our, our emotional bodies all you know blocked and scarred from a whole range of um circumstances that uh, that have happened the same with our physical bodies you know we're all so different we're none of us are the same what we're bringing the damage we've done to our body you know the state of um disease some people might be in everyone's so different so it's uh but you know once you start on that journey of actually trying to or well not trying but healing your body it's just so empowering. And that comes to mind. There's a lot of products out there that are detox products. How would you rate those compared to just fasting? Well, they don't, they don't really compare to fasting. Fasting is going to be the best hands down form of body. There is no product you can take that can do it. Now, there are some, I, I will say there are some herbs and things that you can accelerate healing in per particular areas of the body that you can kind of utilize to target um say you wanted to clear uh, you want to get your kidneys and eliminating properly well paired with certain herbs can help stimulate um that cleansing effect within your kidneys and can help in that regards um so you can kind of use herbs in that way to help um target and be more strategic about how you how you detox because it is kind of it's, it's, it's a, it's a no, um, like, and it's good to get a good idea of how our body is and, and what's happening within it. And so Dr. Morse, if anyone's never heard of him before, I'd highly recommend checking out, uh, checking out his work. He's all about roots, herbs, and fasting as being the tool for health, you know, the way that you can heal just about anything. Um, but he's very, um, He's very, he, he talks a lot about kidney filtration, making sure that your lymphatic system is eliminating properly. So what is your lymph system? Your lymph system is this, um, it's another fluid within the body that we don't, we don't really learn about the lymph, but it's your cellular waste. It's this uh, portion. So every time your cells, they, they, they take in energy and they excrete, you know, the same as we do, they have waste as well. And this waste has to get processed and move out of the body. And how does this do it? it? It's processed through the kidneys and comes out through the urine. So one way that you can test to see if your kidneys are filtering properly is first thing in the morning, you, you pee in a, a clear glass jar and you let it sit there for, um, you know, a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes or so. And if you can see sediment within the urine, that's a really good sign. 
that means that your kidneys are filtering properly. That means because that's the lymph, that's the lymph moving out of your system and getting, you know, so you can see that if your urine is very clear, um, that's usually indicative unless you're just extremely clean, <laughs> extremely clean, um, which most of us aren't. Um, that's usually indicative that your kidneys are filtering properly. And so this means that that, that lymph is, is growing stagnant within some portion of our body. Um, and when it happens that, that waste is, it starts to turn and the acidic waste causes all sorts of other issues, you know, all sorts of other stuff to, to pop up. So the reason I mention that is because it's, it's kind of one of those, um, elimination pathways that it's really important to make sure is working properly so that you can, you're detoxing, you can get rid of that waste. So that's a huge one to focus on your, um, your, your sense making sure that you're eliminating your waste, your feces properly as well. So making sure there's no blockages there. Uh, you mentioned uh, headaches earlier and a great tool for anyone who is fasting and wants to try. Um, if you get headaches, I've, I've, I've heard from many people and I've tried it myself, um, oftentimes in, will help with that. So if, you're, if, if anyone's ever open to trying that, I know that's a weird thing and a weird subject for a lot of people to get into. But enemas are um, a wonderful tool to use to kind of help get add that extra flushing to um, to remove that waste. So those are two: your kidney filtration and your um, your 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 matter. You know, getting having the systems working properly is very very important. So if we're going on a fast um, and those are not working properly, sometimes those back those backups can cause some more dis can cause more discomfort and in other areas. And it, it depends on from person to person. Um, sometimes herbs and supplements, I mean, depending on how they're made, it's such a, that's such a, a open term that I would never fully endorse just supplements because the vast majority of supplements that you buy in stores or anywhere, they're horrible for us. They just add more problems and they accumulate, you know, people will put the, the, the porta potties, they tip typically, and tons of one a days just within the port of pots because they don't digest in anybody of the vitamins that a lot of people take. They don't digest in anybody. They just go out. So they're just hard substances that accumulate in different areas, causing other problems. So that kind of stuff is helpful, but sometimes herbal remedies can be very helpful to, to getting things to eliminate properly. Um, so have somebody look you're, if you want to go, go about it in a more strategic, strategic fashion, which is helpful if you have, um, say, like a particular time window that you want to, you, you, you only have this time window to where you want very, very um, the, the healing as much as possible. Sometimes using herbs to target particular areas can be very helpful. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that at all. Fasting just in general will address every single issue you can possibly have if given enough time, if given enough time to really dig in deep with it and to go in enough with it. Um, so it depends on the individual and how much time they have and how much willingness they have to, to kind of go in those levels. Um, but one way you can kind of um, gauge where you're at is, is looking into something which is reading a virus. Um, and so these, there, there are people out there that will read the iris, submit pictures, and they can kind of gauge where you are within, um, within your health space. And that's, it's, you know, your eyes, the window to the soul, it really does show an amazing portrait of your body and the health within it. You know, just anyone search for iridology and search for what comes out. It's a, it's an amazing practice. Um, and that can be a beneficial way to kind of get an idea. Okay. What is, what is the main areas that my body is help with? Yeah. Where, are, where can my focus be? Um, so if you want to take a more strategic approach, that's a helpful tool to use. And then you can even get with like a detox, but, um, someone who's really trained in that area who can really say, okay, for this week or this, this month or this, you know, this time period, you're going to eliminate this and you're going to have this herbal, whatever. Um, so that's great. But Again, you don't need any of that if if you just want to go straight into water fasting. I mean that that really is just the 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 creme de la creme de la creme of yeah. healing. It's the best. It doesn't for sure. And two things. Um, I'm not sure if there are any of those herbs 
we say herb, we say the H, herbs that um, you can actually recommend for people. And then I'll actually add something onto the, because um, I do colonics, and so I can add a little bit of that um, experience uh, acknowledgement there. So are there any names of the, of the herbs that you can recommend? Well, what I usually do is, is I'll go on to, um, and he recommends doing this as well. You know, Dr. Morse's website, you can find these herbal tinctures where he's got these formulas uh, within these different tinctures and there'll be one for like kidneys and fur or brain or circulation or whatever. So depending on what you're wanting to target, um, just the formula, he's got them listed on his websites and, you know, the tinctures are really good. So if you want to, if you're able to get them from there, they're, they're, um, but if you just want to focus on the herbs and he'll say this too, if you want to make them yourselves, so if you want to make a tea, um, a tea from the herb, uh, combinations or, or however, or you want to make the tinctures yourself or take them, put them in capsules or things of that nature, you can just find those lists and then just go to your local herbalist or, or, or somewhere where they sell those kinds of things and you can buy them in, in that space. And, and they're always ranked, um, the most abundant down to the lead on those, on those, uh, concentrations. So I don't know. Um, I can I mean, Cascada Sagrada is one that pops up a lot. Parsley is one that pops up quite a lot. Um, um, so I think is often, but I, I wouldn't even begin to. Really you can put the, the link down under the description yeah. and people can can go and find it yeah parsley is like a good one because that's always easy to get hold of yeah um let's, can we talk about first about the colon what is the state of most people's colon who who has never done any fasting or cleansing and how well, does that I, hinder absorption of when they do eat good food yeah yeah it, it can get pretty gruesome um and if anyone uh, wants to look up some nasty pictures, just check out the term mute plaque. And you can find a whole bunch of um, horrific pictures of people holding up these this like rubber like uh, stuff that accumulates within our large intestine um, and small intestine. You know, it, it does gunk up pretty bad in, in the whole area. But what it is, is just this. It, um, material that gets stuck within us and it gets stuck in these cavities uh, within our intestine and then that accumulates it hardens and then the parasites kind of grow around it it continues to form mucus forms until it turns into the, i mean what people report it's like it's got the same consistency as rubber you know like it's that hard and dense and people will uh, i mean they'll re they'll report smells of like pharmaceuticals they took 20 some odd years ago and they'll eliminate and pack something like this. And it probably has been sitting there for 20 some odd years. And that's, that's the thing is the way that we're conditioned to eat, everything just gets stuck within us. And, and it really does come down to this, this sort of two easy schools of thought, you know, God is all health is all about flow. Health is all about alkalinity. It's all about this ease for your your body to move, ease for things to flow through your body, ease for 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 your energy energy to move. All of this is all about flow. Every death and decay is all about stagnation. It's all about getting stuck and still and sticky and uh, parasites. The stickiness because then they have a lot of to feed off of it that's why we're conditioned to eat the the gluten glue tin you know it's in the word it's it is like glue the starches they're very glue like um the meat uh the meat dairy and eggs like all the animal eggs very stick within it you look at an egg what is an egg used for in baking it's a, a binding agent it sticks everything together i mean this is the same thing that happens within us it sticks everything so all all of these foods will get stuck within us and then our body has to, um, as this as this stuck material starts to uh, attract all these parasites, and these parasites, their excrement is acidic. So this acidic release of these parasites and and candida and all these different things, it's very acidic. So that's a very acidic thing. So it forms mucus to protect us from that acidic thing that has been formed. So it encapsulates that whole thing with mucus. So mucus is a sign of poor health. 
it's not the reason for poor health. It's the reason you're, it's the way that your body's able to preserve itself. Um, but a high mucus body's full of mucus. That means that your body's constantly having to protect itself from these acids that are forming because they're, they're only two forms of, uh, chemi two sides of chemistry. There's acid and there's alkaline. And just as I mentioned, the flow flow is all about alkalinity is acidity is, is always paired with that stagnation is that death and decay. Um, so when, when we have all of this, this junk that's stuck within us, uh, I mean, literally people, most people have between 10, 20, sometimes more pounds of shit within them, just accumulated fecal matter, this hardens within your intestines. And it's been for years and years and years and years. It's caused all sorts of trouble, still causing all sorts of trouble. Body's just got, gotten into a space to where it's mitigated the risk as much as possible, but it can't really get rid of it because you're not enough to get rid of it. Uh, so it's just stuck there. And so when this ha when this happens with the intestinal tract, our body's not even able to consume the things. It's not even able to produce the things that it really wants. It's got this junk lining its walls to where it can't absorb things properly. It's got these hardened layers that are in between you and, and the nutrients, what your body is actually craving and wanting. So what happens when we start to accumulate all this stuff on our intestinal walls and we can't absorb anything, well, our body starts to feel like oh, we need to eat more. You know, we need to have more things because we're not getting enough. And so people who are stuck in that way, they start to eat more and then they get fatter and then they get fatter. And so um, it's not even, but they're, they're not even able to assimilate the things that they are eating. So don't, they're craving so much because they're actually starving. So the big paradox, it's like uh, fat people out there are actually the ones who are starving the most because their body is in such a state of fear is such a state of um, uncertainty that it's afraid it doesn't have enough it's in survival so it's a constantly accumulating fat cells it's like we don't know what this shit is that you're putting into our body but you might be in very dire states in order to be doing this so we're just going to keep adding to the reserves because we need to protect you from whatever this disaster is that we're facing. Obviously we're facing something serious. If we're doing this kind of stuff to us, people who are very overweight, you know, and, and so when you realize that the first thing, you know, one of the first things that needs to be done is addressing this, this digestion portion so that we can actually assimilate the foods, the foods that we're meant to eat, not these processed cooked you know, concentrated foods that our body's not really meant to eat. Um, so it does take time. And, and it's important to note that when people do shift from a standard every diet and try and move more pure space eating, um, your body might not be able to handle that. Your body might not be able to take on pure forms of food in the right ways until you've gone through enough elimination, until you've gotten rid of beast that lives within you and so you know some people will go on extended fast for the very purpose of getting that thing out so go the distance and keep going until they eliminate that, that long coid plaque thing now not everyone has to have that experience you can eliminate it in stages and it might not be as severe or as dramatic as that um, but a great way to kind of and where you are and it's amazing when you go on a longer fast or just, or a juice, you know, a juice cleanse or anything where you stop eating solid food. And then weeks later, you're still eliminating solid material. You're like, holy sh wow, that was sitting in me <laughs> for how long? Like what? Yeah. Where's it, that it's come a very, from? yeah, it's a very sobering moment. Cause you're like, man, that means my body has just been having to work with this for that long. And so just like anything, you know, he's trying to get waste. It's trying rid of it and so if it sits around it causes all sorts of issues so we're we're we are we are in a lot of because we are literally full shit. yeah and i mean for you know an average unhealthy person that probably half the the um rate diameter of their colon is actually blocked and the actual very small portion that is is actually being used and no nutrients are being absorbed at all um, so about five years ago, when I started cleaning up my diet, and it, you know, it's taken that long to get even where I am now, you know, I did start um, colonics, uh, which are um, 
professional animas. And I do it now, like I go up to a, a beautiful lady and you don't see anything. She has a closed system. It's all very professional. And I get one done about once a month and it just keeps my system clean. And I know that now I'm eating better food. It's getting absorbed. And, you know, just from personal experience, I can totally recommend that. I've never done one where you have to do it yourself. So, um, you know, but there are options around that as well, I'm sure. Yeah, it just depends on your, your level of involvement, that you, something like that. I mean, the 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 enema bags are very inexpensive. The colonics are, are you know, it's it's going to cost about as much for one, probably more for one colonic visit as it would cost for an enema bag that you can use infinite number of. So it just depends on where you are with with costs and that that number of things too. Um, but it's it's not it's not as um, you know, it's, it's not as, uh, intensive a process as, you know, kind of make it out to be more, more of an, really, when you get down, it's, it's a very simple process and it's an ancient technique. It's something that we've been doing forever and ever and ever, um, because it does help to not that we need it as a end all be all. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of a tool to use because we're balanced, we shouldn't need to be doing these kinds of things in order to rebalance, but because we are so imbalanced, it's nice to have these tools to bring that balance back in. Um, so if we need some extra flushing, that's a great way, great tool to utilize. And one that I'd recommend um, anyone try, you know, the, either the, the colonic rod, which I, I've never done, but that sounds, it sounds much nicer experience involved. Um, but the, 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 um, the enemas are it's really not that big of a deal either you know you just there are plenty of videos online that you can watch on how to do one properly how to do one easily and um it's a very simple gentle process yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean as i said just to keep your your system clean so that you know now you are investing in what's the point of investing in nice juicy organic fruit if you're not going to be able to absorb i mean it is a good start but you know you've got to sort of work at both ends clean up the motor of the car and put in healthy oil um just we've got about half an hour left what haven't we touched on that you think is important to bring into this conversation well i mean i think i just a big ask to this is is just how simple it really is and really just you know we can get overwhelmed with the um, idea that health is to be this big complicated thing where i've got to take all these different nutrients got to make sure everything's balanced out correctly and got to attention to have i got enough of this, have i got enough of that am i doing this correctly and you know that's that's sort of the false way that we've been into thinking about health i have people who want to make it seem like it's very complicated. The more complicated it seems, the less likely we're going to do anything to address it. So much simpler one, to just take a pill, right? Yeah, exactly. Just to go just to the pharmacy, take a pill, you'll be fine. Easy. Yeah, to just to just believe believe the the scientist, to just believe the doctor, believe the pharmacist and say, okay, you obviously know better about my health than I do. So I do any work myself. Um that's that's why we believe it's so complicated. That's why we believe it's so hard to reach. And so, so really getting into that thing is the best space to come to this completely come to this from a, from a space where you, you see it for what it is, which is that the true, true health is found in simplicity in every aspect, every aspect. And so when we, when we can acknowledge that simplicity is the truth and this, everything but space it very much applies to as well then it makes total sense why fasting is such a powerful tool because you're you're going the ultra simplicity route you know you're taking away all the complexity of the world of digestion and eating things going into that space of simplicity and so this applies to every aspect of health it's not about it's never about adding things to really it, you can use tools to help with certain things but these is not about adding things it's always about taking things away so you've got to find whatever it is in your life if you're dealing with some health condition you've got to find what it is that you're contributing to that and take that away first and then go deep to these levels of continue the accumulated effect of whatever it whatever it was that you were doing but that has to be the starting point it's not while i think fasting is helpful for anyone 
at any stage, no matter what you are with, it's not going to be the end of all. If you just say, okay, I'm going to fast every now and again, then go back to eating everything, you know, go back to eating all the toxic ways that I was before. And you'll notice too, like you said, it's, it's a much easier time to go into a fast if you're not eating in a sort of toxic way. So it does kind of regulate itself, but it's important to note that it has to be a, you know, it's not like, um, it's, it's like people, the, the, the Christians who think that they can just go to church on Sunday, and be shitty the rest of the week and it's all good. You know, it's like, no, that's not the point. It's not the point where I'm just going to fast for a few days and then I'm just going to destroy my body for the rest of the time. That's not going to work either. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't help in the long term to kind of use it in that space. So just honoring that this simplicity truth is, is part of everything. So not saying anyone needs to make any drastic changes within their diet right away, but look at cutting things away, you know, look at, um, eliminating particular things that are leading to these problems that fasting is very helpful to alleviate, but what's the root cause of why I got into this issue in the first place. And what do I need to do to address that and let go of that? And sometimes the fasting is a great tool because you're just dealing with the addiction portion. You know, for the most part, all of these things that we just addicted to the pattern of doing it, the, the releases that we get from, from sticking into that, that, that way of being. So fasting is a great way to step back and get really simple and say, okay, I can survive without particular thing length of time, obviously, because I'm, I'm still good. So why not try to take it away? Let's, let's try just, let's see how much this, this thing has a hold on me and let's try removing that. So, um, just want to pair that with, with this talk around fasting is, is really looking at these things that we can't take away from, from our body. So, uh, an easy sort of where, where I always suggest people to go to, as far as what are big categories way that can really help you accelerate within your health. Um, really it is looking at the, um, the animal is a big one. You know, we talked about the, this, the stagnation and the stickiness that happens within our body. So if we're still eating the animal products, we're encouraging this, not only the, the parasitical, uh, and attachment because we need the parasites to di digest these things, but they do, they do cause a lot of this stuckness, which is, which is a problem. So looking in that same category, you know, you've got your, your glutens, your breads, and, and these kind of, these kinds of things as well. Those get very stuck within us. Now there are grains and things that aren't nearly as difficult to digest and aren't nearly as difficult. Don't get stuck nearly as easily. Um, but for the most part, the enriched flowers, you know, the, the white flowers and things like that, they do get very stuck within us. That's a good thing. To, that's a good thing to, to sort of, uh, eliminate and remove, um, cooked oils is another one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, oh, yeah, no, I mean, from personal experience, it really is just a lifestyle change. And it doesn't have, for me, definitely didn't happen all at once. It's one little step at a time, one little change at a time. And that one little change might raise your frequency a little bit, which aligns you then with another healthier choice. So once you start the snowball, it actually becomes easier and easier. You can't, I don't think you can just go cold turkey and just, you know, eat perfectly healthy when you've been on a on a shitty diet you know it's just one little change at a time celebrate the chain challenge celebrate you know the um, when you reach a, a little goal because there's so many different aspects and you know there's the the detoxing there's then the healing and then when um because our body, when when it's digesting, all the blood supply and energy is there. You're not detoxing. You're not healing. So it's just becoming aware of the whole process, and um, and just feeling better. Um, oh, I, I I don't want to forget talking about coming out of a fast because this is really important. And I had a hilarious experience on this four day fast. So. I, I've decided, I've got up, I've decided, I had to make a call. Okay, I'm going to break the fast. I've got to drive to work in an hour. I, you know, I'll just have a, a bit of, I'll have a, what do I feel like? I'll feel like a mandarin. Okay, I'll have a mandarin. I'll be fine. I'll drive to work. I've got one little piece of mandarin and I put it in my mouth and I just, like, it was just like really, I didn't want to just chomp on it. It was just like, but then I just started getting the warmth rushed through my body. I hadn't even swallowed it. And it was just like, um, 
And then I just started getting really dizzy. So I went and lay mm. down and I'm like having this psychedelic experience with, and I've never had a real one. So but what I imagine, I'm like, whoa, I'm tripping on a piece of Mandarin, you know. <laughs> it was so funny. And then, you know, over the next half hour, I just had another few pieces and, you know, a bit of pineapple and um, banana. And then, yeah, I felt fine. But what do you say to people coming off a fast, whether it's a, a one day or a, a longer fast? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really important to talk about. Um, really important to, because um, that's the most important part of the fast to really be careful about, you know, to really take heed and to, to do it properly because going into fast, yes, strategies that you can take to with that, but, it is just cutting off what you're eating but when you're coming to eating it's important to go about it correctly especially if you've gone on for an extended period of time because the longer that our digestive um rest, the more that uh, it's a kickstart to kind of back and moving again to where it's working in the ways that it was before and if we go about it too quickly it can be detrimental it can be you know it can be um dangerous even i uh, just just want to note note that to people and and uh, you know there's there's one example that people talk about it's important to to note but i can't remember the guy's name went on a, an extended fast and, and i'm talking i think this was about a 40 days or you know it was, it was like a month long fast where he had gone on just water so this is a long time and he decided he was going to break this um long extended fast with potatoes and so he went straight from a uh, a fast to eating potatoes, and um, uh, he died. He ended up he ended up having a lot of issues, and uh, um, yeah, he died from that experience. So this is this is something that you know we do need to take seriously, and this is not the route to go. You, we need to really be what is our bodies, and this is what another wonderful ask of fasting is is it really helps to make that very brutally and painfully clear what what foods are made for us and what foods are not made for us the foods that are not made for us if we go back to the kinds of foods the cooked foods denser foods um we need to have a warm-up period to reacclimate our body to being able to handle physical food of that nature because the only food that it really wants is the fruit you know, that's the only fruit that that's the only food that it's really eating and that it really eats. And so that's the optimum thing to break a fast with. And that's the very, very important thing you do, especially if you're going for longer than say five days, you know, say, say longer than five days, you really need to focus and, and take heed on what it is that you're breaking your fast with. Um, anything less than that, you can't get away with it, although it will be more if you break it with fruit, it's, it can be quite uncomfortable if you come three day fast and you go straight to something really dense you can have a, a stomach ache you won't feel very well it, it will be very uncomfortable so even from for shorter fast even just a day it's great to have your meal as as fruit you know and juicy hydrating fruit very, very rich is the best um that's going to be the easiest to digest the easiest thing to assimilate and the best first step to go off of and then pinning do you have something you wanted? No, so you you are breaking up a little, but um, okay. it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, is it so to break a fast? Would it be better to have um freshly squeezed juice or the actual fruit? Well, I I think it 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 I I think juice would be a little bit easier um just to kind of a first part because your body's not even having to use the digestive power to to um, utilize the, the fruits from that the glucose um but you really can't go wrong with fruit you know as long as it's juicy and like water rich um that's it's going to be your best bet i think still eating eating a piece of cantaloupe or wall of that nature like it's still going to be a wonderful way to break that fast as opposed to going straight to a dense you know potato or a piece of bread or you know something like that um so so, so yeah, fruit, fruit's definitely going to be the best for 
break it. And depending on the length of time that you've gone on a fast, you're going to want to make sure you have a time of breaking that fast for a, a good rule of thumb is, um, and I, I could be butchering this, but uh, it's every week of fasting, you want to have a day of recovery. So if you've gone, if you've gone two weeks of fasting, you want to have at least two full days of recovery where every meal And we're back. So I can't remember where we are. We lost Justin for a little while. So, um, but I think we'll wrap up now. And, but what message have you got for men regarding fasting? Yeah, well, I, I mean, the, the message would be kind of, um, you know, just that, that healthy brotherly challenge to, to my fellow men out there on, you know, embracing what this means, you know, what embarking on, on the health journey truly means, what fasting truly means. And it means we're, we're finding our strength. We've built our, we've built our whole strength on this world of lies. It's created all this choices, all these conditions, all these things that, that we've built for us. It's made all these toxic layers that we've built our body off of. And that's, that's what we have to strip away. We have to be willing to let go of that. And it's a, it's a frightening process at first. It can be a scary, overwhelming process at first to realize that I've been lied to about everything. And this includes my food, this includes health, and I need to let go of that. And so I would just say that don't look at it as purely a, a physical strength and brawn kind of aspect, because there's very much a necessity to let go of that idea or that society has pushed onto us that we have to be very meaty and puffy and, 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 you know, hold on to all that kind of stuff. We can be very strong, but that strength comes from that resiliency that comes from that inner sense, not, not necessarily the physique aspect. The physique aspect comes from it, but it's a different type of physique. It's not as much about the, the intense, um, you know, having a lot of weight and look, you know, it, 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 it's different. So we need to recalibrate what, what does it mean to be a healthy man? What does it mean to, to embody that strength and not just be looking for these superficial um, signs and ways to categorize people because that's that's a sign of actual weakness weakness is relying on this exterior buffer you know this body formed in some way to categorize and define me as a man no the strength is me having that strength and knowing that if my body is operating as in the best way it possibly can then god can lead me to the best ways that he possibly can and this will always get me to this space to where i need to go um, so I would just say that to any men, as you start to embark upon this journey, this food journey, this health journey, be prepared to let it all go. Be prepared to let this idea on what your body should look like and how it should be, be prepared to let it all go. And if you're not ready for that, that's okay. You know, that's not, it's, it, we don't need to be doing anything before we're ready, but if you are ready, embark on it with that full willingness and knowing that it means we have to let go of what we've been trained. Um, because this is tr truly finding that strength. And we've talked about this, this before, but that, that vulnerability is truly that strength. So acknowledging that I, I am vulnerable enough to bear all and to go through this refining process where everything is literally everything is stripped away from me. And that's why fasting is such a powerful accelerated tool for that because I'm, you're just fully giving yourself to that. You're saying I'm ready for that, this stripping down process where all these lies are taken away so that I can actually build off of something that's real, not that's false. So that's what I would say to, to, to any men out there is, is embrace that as part of this challenge and, and acknowledge that it, it might mean that you need to go through a period of time where you look skinnier or you, you don't have the sort of fluff and you might have the, the, you might have your friends and family comments and say, at least I, I can speak from my own experience. I've had many of my friends and family go through that time where I was much skinnier and still am. And some people think that that looks, I look unwell or I don't have enough on me, but this is because our, our, our idea on what healthy is, is so distorted. It's, it's, it's wrong. You know, we've been taught to think that people should be 
puffy in their face and they should have all this extra weight on them. And that's just simply not true. We're supposed to be nimble and lean and able to move about very easily. And it's all about that flow. We need to be able to flow and, and move easily. So it's, um, it's a, it's a different kind of space to come from, but when we can acknowledge that, then, then we can truly show up as the warriors that we are, you know, as that, that needed, needed energy to st stand strong in that space knowing that I'm not defined by this, this, um, this society's programming of what, what a healthy man should look like, because it's not healthy. And that's actually a weak man, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be a true strong man, a true strong man and, 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 and honor that, that part and that role within this and honor this journey, this journey of, of healing and how arduous it really is, how challenging it really is. And, and wake up each day, ready for that, ready for that new challenge that's going to be presented to me ready to overcome. And when we can recalibrate that and really get excited about the challenges, then they just get better and better because, uh, yeah, we just get better and better. So that's what I'd kind of leave with, with any men, um, watching this is just, it's time, it's time to own this. It's time to own ourselves. It's time to truly own this whole part of the process, not giving away our power to anybody else, but own here and now and fasting and health is such an amazing area to dive into to because you don't have to look to anybody else and don't look to me <laughs> don't look to me you get to own that part and you get to own your space within it and you get to feel what it feels like to truly go through it what it feels like to go through a period of not eating for a day or two or longer you know and and, and survive and and come out on the other side and then break that record and say hey i did that last time Let's go further. Let's go even further this time and just continue going down that path into, um, into the, in the, into the great unknown with that, that tenacity that we all have deeply, this, this sense of, um, excitement that we have for the unknown. The unknown can be very fearful or it can be very scary if we let it, but it can also be very exciting if we let it as well. So the choice is ours. Oh, I love it. Thank you. And you touched on something I feel that we really must um, speak on, but we've only got a couple of minutes left, and that's protein. So what is the big lie around protein? Yeah, well, just like everything else, um, everything is we've been taught as a lie, and the protein myth is a, is a big part of it. Um, but it really is, it, it's, it's very quite simple, you know, like our conditioning is that we have to eat all these com con uh, contain like complex versions of proteins they're very condensed and you know you got to get it through the meats and the eggs or if you're even if you're vegan you got to eat your condensed pea protein you know your protein shakes and make sure you get your protein 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 but <laughs> that's that's just that's coming from a gross mis misunderstanding about how protein synthesis actually happens within our body it's it, we don't get protein by eating protein so this 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 part of the process is this it, that's not how it happens we get protein through protein synthesis which hap happens from providing the, your body with the proper fuel and then your body uses the minerals to build those building blocks which create the proteins within us so all we have to do is provide the proper fuel and our body does all the rest um, so when we eat proteins in that concentrated fashion it has to first break down those proteins into a form of simple sugar so that our body can utilize it as fuel. And this takes a lot more toil. It takes a lot more process to break those concentrated forms of protein down to something that our body can even utilize. So when we eat them, it's just adding a lot more harm and toil to us. Um, whereas if we're just eating the proper fuel, which would be the glucose and the easiest form of glucose is from the fruit. When we're eating the proper fuel, then our body doesn't have to go through that. And so that's why you look around at the, the gorillas and the, the, the rhinos and the elephants, and they don't eat, they don't eat concentrated forms of protein. They don't worry about eating protein. They just feel their body in the ways that they, they feel called to fuel it. Um, and especially within a gorilla, if, if a gorilla had choice, it would eat fruit hundred percent of the time, no question. If it, if it had that available to it, it would never turn away from that because that's the easiest form of food and fuel for our body. And if anyone wants to think that a gorilla is not strong, well, I, I don't know what else to tell you then. So this is, this is the same way that we are as well. We don't need to worry about eating the proteins. It's all about fueling the body properly. And if you want to be stronger, then you need to 
you need to work out in those areas. You know, it's all about giving your body that resistance so that you train it in that particular area. But if you feel your body paired with the proper resistance, that's where the strength really comes from. Amazing. And I know we could go on and on, but I've actually got a Heart Warrior interview coming up in half an hour I need to record. Um, I would like to show a few books that I know Justin recommends. So there's this one. Sorry, I've got this virtual thing on. Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> no, so I'll put them in the description. Um, oh, sorry. There you go. There you go. These are, are great books that I'm in the process of reading as well. So I'll put them all in the description and anything else that Justin recommends. Um, maybe we'll come back and do another show on food because I think, you know, you've got a lot more to share. I love how um, you ended it with um, the analogy of the, of course, the gorilla and, you know, those massive, strong animals there. So thanks so much, Justin, for your wisdom, your time, as always, and I'm sure we'll have you back on soon. Yeah, it's an absolute joy to be here. Oh, sorry. No, go on. Sorry. I was just oh. going to say to people, please like, share, get get the message out. You know, we're, we're really trying to speak, well, man to man, not me. I'm here just um, holding the space. Man to man, get our men rising, heart and spine and fasting is an incredible way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And just want to thank thank you, Gemma, for continuing to hold that space and, and giving that opportunity for this message to get out there because it is important. It is important that we start talking about all these things and start talking about what we can do with this it's not about just listening to me or listening to you it's about what 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 can i integrate within this how can i use this to improve on my life or to walk closer you know closer to my highest self my my greatest potential and so this is just a great way to step into that and to truly own the health space and own who i am and and know that you know everything is set up for me everything is set up for me to excel so i've been given this body and it is perfect it is absolutely perfect as it is. I don't need anything else to add on to it. Um, I just need to get out of its way. And having that true understanding really is, it's its powerful. It, it unlocks everything. Um, so yeah, thank you, Gemma, for having me on. Thank you for this conversation. And I'm more than happy to come back anytime. Wonderful. Well, best I shut up because <laughs> I was just about to start another conversation, but we'll definitely come back on with part two. Well, another maybe, you know, food or something that's not focused so much on fasting. So bye, everyone. Thanks for being here.